Our next point, ladies and gentlemen, the man that's been with us since we started. When you're thinking about Thomas, nearly nine solid years since we both started together. Yes, this is the night that Desmond McGrady opened up the White House poetry and I'll ask you not to walk around with the location. Tom McCarthy. Woo! Woo! Where'd it go? Woo! Whistle! We're going to play some I can whistle. <laughs> I could whistle, I would. <laughs> Just actually listening to the poets tonight. Uh, the Sheila Fitzpatrick, a long night, didn't mention that her, her father, Bunny, used to come here actually with, with her mother who actually published a book and um, so she had she has it in her blood in a sense mm -hmm. and her mother's book is actually widely known in, in my Rosh and the Benanti area because it's very popular it's down to earth poetry for most of the people it's very good um, Tom Maloney uh, apologising for the point that your wife read last, last week I think she read it very well and I tell her when she comes here next time, and he said that she didn't. That's because you were chasing her. I'm going to give it again. When Joe started a poem there about the first time shooting a, a shotgun and then being at a funeral, I was wondering did he shoot somebody? <laughs> <laughs> didn't bury him. Right. Um, this is. Uh, this, this, Point originated from actually looking out my window and seeing two presents in my back garden. No, it doesn't mean that my back garden was 10 acres, it's just a back garden. Like, it just happened that uh, it's called uncultivated, and it's self explanatory after that. Uncultivated. Nature prevails. A thought that flickered across my mind at the sight of a cock and a hen pheasant strolling round my back garden. Pecking at whatever series their palate relished from my patch of green. Not six miles from the city centre, yet a thousand miles from nowhere at dawn, and another thousand when the moon smothers the sun. It made me wonder about ancestral connections, thinking that even the animals refused to surrender their birthplace. I tried to imagine a conversation between Anne Hen Pheasant and Frank Cock Pheasant. Wondering if they were an item, or if they were just another Ryan Giggs affair, hopping from one bird to another. <laughs> Making me search for a reason as to why immorality is the in thing in the 20th century. Decency and respect secondary to sexual desires. We're being watched, whispered Anne Hen Pheasant. I know, said Frank Cock Pheasant. That's Tom. How do you know his name? asked Ken. The Badger family told me, Frank replied. Apparently he lifted their uncle off the road when he was mowed down by a post office van about six months ago. They said that Uncle Badger died shortly afterwards. They also told me that Tom was kind to animals, so there's no need to be afraid. I'm afraid, said the big tree at the top of the garden. Why? asked Frank Cockpheasant. Because your so-called kind Tom bought a chainsaw last week. <laughs> and he didn't buy a chainsaw to slice the Sunday roast or cut the grass. <laughs> what are you complaining about? asked Anne Hill Peasant. As soon as my eggs are hatched, feathered and gone from the nest, I'll be ducking and diving buckshot again until next spring. And so will Frank. That's true, said Frank, cock peasant. When the shooting season starts, we can only live life from one minute to the next. Frank continued. Besides, you must be over a hundred years old. Exactly, said the tree. That's my point. I'm a hundred and two years old, and I do not want some blowing like your so-called poet Goody Two-Shoes, Tom McCranky, cutting me down just to warm his arse. <laughs> that will never happen, said Frank. How do you know, asked the tree. Because I heard Tom talking to his daughter Stacy about building a tree house for his granddaughter Aaliyah. Over my dead trunk, said the tree, I'll be the laughing stock. Frank Cock Pheasant went on to say, Tom also asked his daughter Stacy to promise never to cut down, to cut you down, if you were to die, saying that you were the focus point of the garden. Focus point, said the tree, what does he mean? He means there will be a big gap if you're cut down, said Ang. And in pheasant. Besides, if you were to build a treehouse amongst your branches, wouldn't that be some kind of guarantee that he wasn't going to cut you down? And in the present economic crisis, 
with the extra cold winter and the price of oil, I wouldn't be laughing too much if I were the tree next to you. Let's go and, said Frank the cock pheasant, Keen's cats will be rising shortly. Oh, by the way, said the tree, minks and foxes are plenty this year. Make sure your nest is well camouflaged. I watched the cock and hen pheasants disappear into the thick brush on a piece of uncultivated land between my neighbor's house and mine, blending in with the colors like a pair of chameleons. Thank you.